hello and welcome back to the Reiki Gem Wellness channel. This is my weekly episode on Let's Talk Crystals. And for those who are new to the channel, my name is Shannon and I'm a certified Reiki master and teacher and a certified gemologist. And I combine those skills and passions to provide you with the knowledge, the tools, and the opportunities to start incorporating crystal healing into your daily life. And these particular episodes are meant to answer your most frequent questions about crystals and gemstones, and also to provide you with a, an example of how I use crystals and gemstones in my everyday life so that you can have some working examples so that you can see how a person does it in their actual everyday life. And these episodes are more casual. They are unscripted. I only have a little, a few notes. So this is more conversational and more, you know, having a chat and answering your questions and telling you about what's been going on in my life. And this week has been really full, full. And it's been really, really exciting. And I'm... Um, I have a really wonderful announcement and you may have already seen it on Facebook or in the community page for this YouTube channel, but I had had a long-term goal to develop an online Reiki certification path. And that was a long-term goal, but just recently I have received so many emails and so many comments asking if I would start offering Reiki courses that I have started, that I've already started it, that I've moved up that goal and we're going to be doing it right now. And my target to release the Reiki level one certification course is in September. Now, traditionally I've done all of my Reiki teaching in person. I have all of the materials and the manuals. I've just had to go through a process of converting all of that into video content so that I can make the online course available for you so that you can do it no matter where you are in the world. You can do it at your own pace because right now doing in-person sessions really isn't safe. And this is a time in our world when we, we need a lot more healing. We need healing for ourselves. We want to provide healing for others and we want to lift up the energy of the world. So I want to make Reiki available for more people right now. So my plan is that this is a five course certification path. And you don't have to purchase it all at once. Um, you can do it a piece at a time as you feel ready for the next step. The first one is Reiki level one. There will be Reiki level two, Crystal Reiki, Reiki master, and Reiki teacher. And I do hope to have Reiki level two available sometime in November of 2020 so that and that's a good time period after you've taken Reiki level one in September, having a couple of months to practice those skills will be really helpful. So if you're interested in receiving an email when I publish Reiki level one, then um, in the description below, there is a link to a Google form so that I can collect your email address. And that's all the information I'm collecting, just an email address if you want me to email you when that has been published. And I will be publishing a, a preview of that as well, but just to let you know what will be available in the Reiki Level 1 course is that there are 14 videos, there are 14 modules. You'll get a complete Reiki Level 1 course manual, you'll get a completion certificate. There are 14 videos. You'll receive your Reiki Level 1 empowerment. And the videos include instruction videos on everything from how to start working with energy very simply all the way to giving treatments to other people. 
There will be demonstration videos, there will be meditation videos, and then there's the empowerment video as well. So it's a really, really in-depth course, and you will be able to perform Reiki on yourself and on others and learn about all of the other ways that you can use Reiki in your everyday life. So, yee. so you can tell I was, I'm really excited about that. And what crystal helped me with that? Well, there are two, because there are two situations. One is I'm, this is a time when I'm creating something when I want those ideas to flow and to be able to transform this from an in-person class to a video course and still make it really personal. And when I need to create something, carnelian is my go-to stone. And I have two different types. I have this, um, two different colors of carnelian here. And I sit with carnelian for a few minutes before I start the creation process because that really allows me to relax any like self-doubt or expectations that I have about it and allows the ideas to rise up. And I, I do a form of this in my um, creativity guided meditation that I released a couple of weeks ago. And yeah, carnelian is my go-to stone for really getting my creative juices flowing. But also another one that's very helpful is fire quartz. This is fire quartz. And um, it is quartz that has inclusions and streaks of hematite in it. Now this is the stone of clear focus. And it's also a very a stimulating stone for, for bringing up great ideas and then helps you take them from idea phase in, to manifesting them, to actually putting words on paper, to planning things, to do the filming. This helps you actually bring something from idea to existence in, in our, real, our real life. And so fire quartz is really phenomenal for that. But also, since I spent a lot of time in front of the computer doing a lot of planning, doing a lot of writing for the videos, at the end of the day, my mind tends to feel a little bit like scrambled eggs. I'm a little bit unfocused, just looking at documents on a screen, um, tends to do that to my mind by the end of the day. And I experienced this a lot when I worked in the corporate environment and I was working with Excel spreadsheets and Word documents and PowerPoints all the time. And hematite is always my go-to stone after I'm done working on the computer that I just take it and if I can go outside, if it's not raining or a million degrees, then I take it outside and I stand on the ground and I hold it and it's heaviness just brings me back to my body. It helps like my mind snap back and focus again. And it really just, it brings me back to the present moment and my life and allows me to then go make dinner for the family and do the things that I need to do after work. So that, that is, I use this so much when I was working in my corporate job. <laughs> so much. And then finally, you know, I just had so much to balance. We were still, we still had school this week. And this is a week in which many schools in my area started. And this may be something that a lot of parents have experienced. If you're doing remote learning with your children, if you're helping them with the technology, if you're helping them get their schedules straight, and the whole family is trying to adjust, I, I mentioned this in a previous video, but this is an example of how things come back over and over and over again. I needed a little extra patience this week. And my kids and I, we're already into the groove of homeschooling. But my daughter flips out when she has to write a paragraph. She's in second grade. 
And I need to have a lot of extra patience to help guide her through it and help her realize that paragraph writing isn't scary. So I use a combination of Howlite and Aventurine as they both, as they both um, just boost patience. They help calm our emotions. They help us have a little bit more calm patience for things going on in our lives. And, you know, these are ones that you can either wear. This is a question I get a lot. You don't have to have skin contact with your gemstones. You can put them in your pocket. You can just set them near you. You're going to get the energy because energy is not bound by barriers like clothes. It's going to go right through. So you can stick the gemstones in your pocket. You'll still get the energy from them. But that's not the question of the week. The question of the week is, is a rough gemstone more effective than a polished gemstone? Does the shape or form of the crystal or gemstone matter? Like here, I have my rough rose quartz. I have my polished rose quartz. Like does, is there a more effective form that I need to be purchasing? And the good news is, it doesn't matter. Yay! Whatever form the crystal or gemstone takes that you connect with most is the one that will be most effective for you. So if you prefer all of your gemstones and crystals in rough form, then that's what you should collect. If you prefer them polished, that's what you should collect. But it goes even beyond that. If you want to collect all spheres, all towers, all carved stones, all little heart-shaped stones, like whatever form you are attracted to is the one that's going to work best for you. So it doesn't matter. And I hope that is a relief to, to some people who may have been worrying about it because some people are out there shopping right now and they're, they're trying to decide, what, what do I get? You know, some people prefer it all in jewelry form. So that way they can just put it on or put it around their neck and then they don't have to worry about it anymore. It's on them. Um, but a lot of people love these heart stones a lot of people love palm stones. There are so many shapes and forms. I, I do know there are some, some online stores out there that sell complete sets of towers and they look so impressive. They're like, they're like three or four inches tall. I don't have any towers. It's just not the shape that I prefer, but they look great. And they're, they're great to hold in your hand during meditation. Uh, what other shapes have I encountered? Um, I don't have any more examples, but if you want big, big giant pieces, you can collect those too. So whatever form you want your gemstones to be in, that's the one for you. Thank you so much for joining me again this week for Let's Talk Crystals. And if you have a question about gemstones or crystal healing, then one, check the playlist because I have all of these gathered in a playlist. Check the playlist to see if I've addressed one of your questions. But if I haven't posted a video on it yet, then make sure to leave a comment um, posting your question, a video that you'd like me to film to answer your question. And I'm making a very long list. I have so many questions. So these videos should be going on well into the future. So thanks again for joining me. I hope you're having a great weekend and I will see you again next week. <laughs>